You're the one key player from last season's Sweet 16 run, healthy playing this season. How have you adjusted into that role with this whole new cast of characters? I mean, it took time. Um, I felt like I was able to get closer with, you know, the guys this year just because everybody was new. Um, but I, you know, I think I adjusted well. Uh, like I said, everybody was new, so I was able to be close, you know, talking to Coach Miller, that was part of my role, you know, from sitting in the back of the bus to jumping all the way to the front and, uh, you know, taking on that leadership and guiding people because, you know, I was the only one that knew how things work over here. So just taking guys under my wing, um, especially like Daylin and some of the freshmen. Um, and then, you know, over time, I just got comfortable with it. So. Bus seating on a college team is so important. Mm -hmm. And people who do not play college sports don't realize that. No. Are you more of a back of the bus guy or front of the bus guy naturally? <sighs> back of the bus. Yeah. Yeah. How are you adjusting to the front of the bus? I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm adjusting well. Like I, I took on the role. Um, it's what I needed to, to, for us to be, you know, successful. And, you know, recently we're, we're hitting the peak right now. So, you know, we just got to keep that up. But, um, but honestly, it's a road that I wanted to take. I knew that it would make me better as a basketball player and as a person, you know, even off the court, um, making sure guys, you know, ain't acting up for real or just being like a little mentor to them. But, um, but yeah, so. You're only a sophomore last year, like freshman rookie year, the whole team fifth year, seniors, so many guys with so much experience. What has been the toughest transition for you going from first year to a sophomore leader on this team? I think from, you know, transitioning to, you know, being the sixth and seventh man to being the starter, playing majority of the minutes and being, you know, that guy, um, you know, it's a lot of responsibility, you know, got to make the right plays. Um, Got to be a leader, you know, talk and and uh, and try to make the winning plays. So, um, you know, I think that was like the biggest transition um, and being able to keep up with everything and then, you know, hold everybody accountable, you know, as well as myself. Over the offseason coming into this year, you were on so many lists nationally as potential breakout player. Keep your eye on Desmond Claude. He could be that dude. How did you handle all that attention in the off season? You know, I just, you know, I seen it and I was like, okay, like that's the jump I want to make. Um, but, you know, with social media, I don't really get, you know, I don't really pay attention, you know, to that too much because, you know, it could go either way, you know, you're going good, everybody loves you, you know, not doing so good, everybody's just throwing you under the bus. So I just, you know, tune it out. So preseason during the summer, I just tuned it out and just stayed with my routine. Um, kept working out and, you know, just really trying to make that jump. Did you feel any of that stress or pressure when you guys were taking a little bit of a slower start before you hit your stride like you guys are now? Uh, definitely. Um, you know, like last year it was a little different um, with, you know, winning, you know, more games or the record that we had and just how everything went. But, you know, every, you know, path is different. Every team's path is different. And um, I feel like we're drawing our own you know, journey and it's, and it's starting to, to creep up in a good way. Every path is different. I think that's the perfect way to ask. What was your childhood like? <laughs> um, you know, childhood, I was a homebody. Uh, spent a lot of time with family. Um, loved to watch the ball, loved to play ball. I started working out for real, for real. Probably like fourth or fifth grade. So yeah, so just training and working out and playing and hooping and Speed and agility, like all the other things. Like I wasn't a guy that that went out a lot, or even went over friends' house. Like I wasn't. That's not what we really did. So, um, but you know, I did spend a lot of time with family. I had a lot of fun. I mean, um, I had hobbies like fishing, drumming, and uh, you know, going to uh, place visit places and stuff. So, you know, I was a homebody, but I was also a big family guy. I would put myself in that category. Speaking of family, like talk about a home run on genetics. You come from two college basketball playing parents, especially your mom was a star at Syracuse. How much of an influence did that have in your basketball path? Uh, a big influence. Um, 
you know, just watching them, you know, they still be playing in like JCC leagues or little leagues and just and just hearing how they talked about it or, you know, the stories that they told me is like I wanted to be part of it, you know, playing in front of, you know, 10,000, 15,000 people, um, having a chance to go to the next level. And that's really uh, what I wanted to do. And then, you know, they helped encourage me and they and, you know, I trusted them a lot because obviously they've been at that level and, you know, they done been there and done a lot of the things that I want to do. When was the first time you beat your mom in one on one? Oh, <laughs> I mean that she caught me a couple of times, but it, it was real early on. Okay. She she stopped playing me after a while. <laughs> yeah, she stopped playing me after a while. Um, but, you know, she you know, she was just big on rebounding, you know, playing hard um, and just getting like the confidence and good motivation versus, you know, my uh, dad, he was more of like the skill. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what to do in this situation, Reeves. And so they all like play like their their role and, and they know it, like they'll tell, they, they'll say the same thing. Like they got, my mom got her role and then my dad got the role and they just, it just all coexists with each other. Who'd win one-on-one, -on -one, mom or dad? My dad. You think so? Yeah, well, if, if my, you know, dad doesn't let her win. <laughs> yeah, but he, he would definitely, yeah, she don't, you know, she still be down there with my little brothers and stuff, but you know, with us is, you know, we too old for that right now, so. When you were done playing games growing up, what was car rides back? Were they giving you coaching feedback or were they more like just parents? Um, I would say a mixture of both. It wasn't necessarily in the coaching perspective, but it was like a regular conversation. They knew how to talk to me and, and knew how to explain things to me for me to understand. So. I would say it was more of a parents, but, you know, since they're basketball players and, um, you know, they play at the highest level and, and they done, you know, seen a lot, they just, you know, give me their points and feedback and, and they ask me what my thoughts is or why didn't I do this or why did I do that. So it was more of them being parents, just having a regular conversation, but also, you know, uh, uh, educating me on and trying to help me get better. Did you like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, some nights was rough. I'm not gonna lie. So like, some nights was rough, you know, whether we lost or I didn't play good, but um, it was rough only because like, I didn't really want to have the conversation, but I knew it was, you know, it was gonna make me better and help me out. And, you know, nobody wants to talk after a tough loss or, you know, playing bad, so. How has that upbringing prepared you for this season right now? Oh, I mean, it has, you know, a lot. I mean, we watch film back home, talk about it, and, you know, there's a lot of similar things that we do here. Like, we watch film, we scout. Um, a lot of the same messages that Coach Miller and the assistant coach give me, like my dad and mom also gave me. So it all, you know, played in. And, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that my parents said is true. That's why, you know, it, I, it builds a lot of trust up because, you know, they're hardly ever wrong. So that's really because mo most kids, you know, even the elite athletes, they go back and mom or dad have something to say about the game. And you're like, you don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, yeah, here's a little yeah, different. Yeah, they, they, they know what they're talking about. Like, <laughs> I can't be like they don't know what they're talking about, and especially if they the ones that got me here today. Before the season, Coach Miller talked about how this team at first, even you've said it to me in the hallway before, like you all going to be the underdogs at first but later in the year, you're gonna find your stride. Right. It looks like that's now. Yeah. Why is that happening now? I feel like everybody is settling in, you know, each game that we play, you know, I think just me on the team, I'm the only one that played a Big East game. So, you know, a lot of my teammates didn't really know what to expect or how the game was gonna get refed or how fast it was gonna be or the physicality. So I think once everybody started settling in, you know, continue to trust Coach Miller in the offense and uh, continue to play defense, I feel like the main reason why we're hitting our peak is because we're really good at defense. Um, we get a lot of deflections and um, get a lot of stops. So um, I feel like those are the two, two main reasons to, that we're starting to hit our peak. What is the one thing for someone who hasn't played Big East basketball that kind of catches them off guard for their first game? 
I would just say the 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 atmosphere, um, especially at away games. Like every away game is very hard to to try to win. Um, but I would just say like the physicality and the pace. I would say those are the top, you know, two to three things that you know not most guys are really expecting until you know it's jump ball and you know clock's going. What's it going to take for this team to get back to the tournament? You know, just continue to, to, to keep pushing uh, one game at a time. You know, continue to trust what we're doing. Um, continue to produce, play defense, and, you know, play hard. When we think of, you know, Xavier basketball, we want it to be like, oh, these guys play hard, they hoop, they give everything they got. You know, if the other team beats us, it's, it's because they beat us. We didn't beat ourselves. So, um, But we're a hard-playing team. And, and I think that's what's going to, you know, continue to get us to, to keep going. What is like the one big circled goal you guys have? I, I just said the tournament, but what is it internally with you guys? You know, just continue to, to win. I mean, a lot of these guys that came, um, you know, from the other situation wasn't really in the winning spot, if that makes sense. So, you know, they just want to win. They want to get to the tournament. Most of them never got into the tournament. so. They just want to get that feeling and, and you know, try to get far in the, in the tournament. This time last year, since you were a freshman, you had never been to the tournament. Now yeah. that you've been to a Sweet 16, mm -hmm. do you want it more now or did you want it more then? Now. I would say I want it more now. Why? Um, I would say I was very fortunate to be a freshman to even experience getting to the Big East Championship and, you know, the Sweet 16. I feel like most freshmen may not have expected or uh you know gotten a chance to do that so i was just i was more shocked and happy and excited about the moment and being there versus um you know trying to get there like obviously i love to win i was trying you know trying to win but i would say i wanted more now because you know the role that i have is obviously bigger from last year um but honestly who don't who don't want to make the tournament like everybody wants to make the tournament but I just feel like, you know, with this team that we got now and, you know, with my individual stuff, like we put in so much work to, to, to really try to get that goal. So, you know, we're really trying to, to reach there. And, you know, like we said earlier, we're hitting our peak right now. So we just got to keep it going. So it means that much more now that you're the guy. Yeah, pretty much.